Hello, this is Jacqueline from Jack Knits, and today we are going to knit these beautiful fingerless mittens. These are really going to be fun to knit because we are going to use the magic loop method to knit these mittens, not double pointed needles. I have other videos that uh, shows how to use double pointed needles to knit regular mittens, but these mittens I decided to show you with the magic loop. Now, if you're unfamiliar with the magic loop uh, method, I have a video specifically instructing how to use the magic loop. Um, and I will have a link in the upper right hand corner. But these are a great project to practice the magic loop method with. It's a pretty quick knit. Um, it's a nice circular um, knitting project that works really well with magic loop. So let's do that together. These are uh, really fun fingerless mittens. It's got this really pretty ribbing on the side that gives it just a nice little decorative touch. <music> All right, let's first talk about the materials that you're going to need to knit up these fingerless mittens. Um, as I mentioned, we're going to be using the magic loop method for this. And for that, you're going to want to have just one long circular needle. That's the beauty of magic loop. You don't need uh, double pointed needles or the right exact size of a circular needle. All you need is one long circular needle and that will do the trick. I am using a US size six needle and this is about a 32 inch. So you'll need about that length or more. Um, for your needle. Um, and the yarn that I'm using is a Lion Brand Basic Stitch. I will have a link to all of these products in the description below as well. You can check those out if you're interested in purchasing it. But this color that I'm using for the sample is, let's see what color, a sage, really pretty green color. You're going to need a, a darning needle for this, a couple of stitch markers, and a piece of scrap yarn and uh, scissors. So that's what you need for these. Let's get started by casting on and working with the magic loop. All right, let's cast on for our project. We're just going to use the regular long tail cast on method for the magic loop method. You can use whatever cast on method you prefer, but I'm going to use a long tail today. And let's just cast on the number of stitches we need for this project. Now my pattern calls for the, the ribbing of this uh, mitten to be 32 stitches. But uh, the way that I like to do magic loop is to cast on one additional stitch, and that additional stitch is going to be used to join in, a, in the round uh, when we're knitting the cuff. So for this particular pattern, we are going to cast on 33 stitches to start. So let me give myself a tail here, and we will cast on 33 stitches. And this, again, is using the long tail cast on method. All right, I cast it on 33 stitches. And now to join in the round with the magic loop, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna flip it over to this side. We are going to move the stitches now to the very center of our cable. So just like that, excuse the clicking of my needles on, the, on my desk here. Um, so the, now the stitches are in the middle and we're going to try to determine what is halfway um, through my stitches, which is going to be approximately 16 stitches. So let's count 16 stitches in from this end. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16. So right here, we're going to fold our cable in half and pull this cable needle out. So our stitches are moving to the tips of the needle. And we're going to keep pushing the stitches so they are sitting on the tips of my knitting needles, okay? Now let's turn it to the side here. And we want to, at this point, just make sure that our cast on edge here is pointing towards the center of our needle. So we don't want, you know, any twisting action going on. We want them all pointed to the center. And now we're going to join in the round. And to do that, we're going to slip these stitches kind of close to the tip here. And the tip that does not have the working yarn attached to it, this one up here, we're going to just take our finger and remove that first stitch 
and place it on this bottom needle, okay? Now we're gonna take this second stitch on this bottom needle and pass it over that first stitch and off the needle. So now we've both eliminated that extra stitch that we cast it on and we've connected them. So now our needles are connected. All right, let's now flip our work over to this side and let's position ourselves to start to work uh, by knitting in the round for the magic loop. So the first thing that we want to do is want to make sure that our yarn is in the correct position. So here's our tail. I don't need to worry about this. This can just kind of hang out here between the needles uh, towards the bottom. But the working yarn, I want to make sure is between these needles and laying on top of, wrapping on top of the one in the back. Okay, that's where I want my uh, working yarn to be positioned. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take this top needle and use that needle to knit the stitches on the bottom needle. So the stitches on the bottom needle are already in the right position for us to knit them. So now we just need to pull this top needle out and just pull it about halfway out so you have enough needle to work with. And you can position your hand at this point to start knitting. And we're going to knit now the stitches on this bottom needle. And you just follow whatever stitch pattern your pattern calls for. For this particular pattern, we're doing this, this mock ribbing here, and that uh, requires us for round number one to do a knit one and purl one uh, stitch sequence all the way to the end of the round. So let's do that, um, starting with just a knit stitch, then a purl stitch, and continue to repeat those two stitch sequence, knit, purl, knit, purl. Let's do this to the end of that needle, this needle, and then I'll show you how to knit the rest of the stitches. Okay, knitting these last couple on this top needle, or this bottom needle. Now we need to knit the rest of the stitches of this round. So what I like to do is kind of just drop my needle, put my yarn up, rotate my needle. So my, now my working yarn is again in that position that we like it to be in, which is between the needles and um, pulling up over top of that back one. Now I want to knit the stitches on this needle. So I need to position those stitches so I can properly do that, which means I need to push this cable needle through to slide them on this tip of this needle. All right, we're sliding them all the way over here. So now we're going to knit the stitches off of here with this top needle. So now I need to, again, pull this needle out about halfway, and then I can knit these stitches down here. Now we're still working on round one. So we are still using the knit one, purl one knitting sequence that um, our pattern is telling us to do for round one. So let's do that till the end of this uh, set of stitches and that will complete round one. Right, wrapping up with these last two stitches and knit and then a purl that completes round one. Now again we'll drop this needle, rotate it with our yarn up in between those needles and now we can proceed to knit round number two and we again need to push this cable through this bottom set of uh, stitches so it's on the tip of our needle and now I can take the, this top needle, pull it out halfway, and let's knit round two. So round two for this really pretty mock rib is just all knitting. So that's what the mock rib is. It's gonna be row one and all odd number rows are gonna be knit one, purl one, knit one, purl one, repeat. And then all even number rows are going to be just knitting all stitches. So let's knit all stitches for round number two. Again, we're gonna now knit this first set of stitches to the end of this group of stitches. All right, 
right now we're done with that group we're going to again drop our needle rotate it with our yarn up and over the back of the top push our cable through those bottom stitches and we can pull this top needle out and continue to finish round two, which is again, just all knit. All right, that completes round two. So now let's drop our needle again, rotate it over here, and we'll go on to round three. And round three is just the repeat of round one. It's that knit one, purl one, and then we're gonna go back to knitting um, all the stitches of a round. So you're gonna continue that repeating at round one and round two for a total of 20 rounds total for the cuff. And that will be this a nice good couple inches for the cuff. So after you've uh, done that two row sequence for 20 rounds, we will go on to kind of this uh, knit this little transition uh, section before we get to the thumb gusset. Okay, so I will uh, knit ahead here and finish the cuff and then we'll come back. All right, so now our cuff is completed. I did this mock rib pattern, which round one was all knitting one, purl one, repeat. Round two was all just knit all stitches. We repeated that round one and round two for a total of 20 rounds. So now we've got this nice cuff completed. So now what we're going to do is do a little transition section here before we start working on this thumb gusset. So we are going to now, instead of doing the mock rib all the way around, we are going to just uh, do the mock ribbing on the edge of the mitten. So we'll do stocking that up to this mock rib sti uh, stitch and then finish the round with more stocking net. So let's do that for a few rounds. I'll show you how we're gonna do that. Again, follow along with the pattern that um, you can link to in the description below for complete written instructions. But let's start this first round of this little transi transition section, and we're gonna start by just knitting 10 stitches. So knit for 10. Now we're going to do this mock rib section. So we are going to now switch to that mock ribbing uh, pattern and we're going to do a knit one, purl one and repeat that for six times. So let's do a knit one, purl one and let's repeat that for a total of six times. So we're going to uh, do another knit, purl, knit, Pearl. Now we're at the end of that section, so we're going to switch over to the other side and do the last three repeats on this section. Knit, purl, knit, purl, and knit, purl. Okay, so we did that knit, purl sequence a total of six times. Now we should have 10 stitches left and we're going to knit for 10 stitches to the end of the round. All right, so that is our round one for this transition section. Now round two is going to be all knit. So we'll just knit all the way through round two. All right, so we did round one and two, and we are going to now repeat those two uh, rows or rounds two more times. So let's do another uh, section of knitting 10 and then doing the knit one, purl one for six times, knitting 10, we'll do that, and then the knit row two more times. So I'll jump to the end and I'll meet you at that point. 
All right, we've completed the number of rounds that we needed to do for these little transition section here before we start the thumb gusset. Now what the thumb gusset is, is a series of increased stitches right here to create this V section uh, for to make room for the thumb. So that's what we're going to start next. We're going to do these increases for the thumb gusset, but then continue on with this pattern of stocking net stitch, mock ribbing, finishing with stocking net stitch, um, for the to match with it with the hand so it will be kind of um, important to follow along with the written instructions if you like step by step round by round of knowing exactly which stitches to do but I will kind of give you a little bit of template do the first couple rounds together and then you should be able to uh, follow uh, nicely so to start um, and, and just to let you know too that the right and left mitten for this pattern is slightly different because of the placement of the thumb. So the thumb on the right mitten is at the very beginning of our round. The thumb placement for uh, the left mitten is going to be at the very end of the round. So we are going to uh, follow the pattern just for the right mitten for this example. But when you follow with the written instructions, you want to make sure you do one right mitten and one left mitten, of course. All right, well, the instructions call for one setup row, and that setup row is just going to help us put some stitch markers in the right place to know when we're going to do our increases for our thumb gusset. So let's do that round first and place these stitch markers. So for this first round of the thumb gusset, we're going to do a setup uh, row first, and that is going to be to knit two. Then we're going to place a stitch marker. Then we will knit three stitches. One, two, three. Place another stitch marker. Now we will knit five. And now we are kind of what we're doing now is really just kind of following the pattern that we've established with the stocking net stitch and the ribbing. So these first five stitches are going to be knit. Now we're going to follow that ribbing pattern, which calls for a knit stitch and then a purl. And we'll repeat that for a total of six times. Knit and purl, knit and purl. Finish that sequence of knit and purl for three more times. And then we'll finish this with 10 knit stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Great, okay, so that was our setup row. Now we are going to uh, do some increases between these two, two stitch markers. So let's, uh, so now really round one of our thumb gusset, that first one was a setup row. Let's do our increases. So to do our increase round, we are going to knit to the marker. So knit two, slip the marker, and now we are going to do a make one right uh, increase stitch. And to do that, we're going to pick up this little strand of yarn between the um, our two stitches here, the one that we just completed and the next one, pick that up with our right needle, place it on our left needle in this fashion, going from front to back in this way. You see how that's looped over, over across? Now we're going to knit that stitch uh, the front way. And this is very often very difficult to get your needle right in there. So what I like to do is give it a little help with my right needle so I can give it a little gap there and then stick it in. That might help you get that needle in the right spot to do a knit. So knit that stitch and that was one increase um, right after our stitch marker, the make one right. Now we're going to uh, knit to our next marker, so knit three. Now we're going to do another increase but this time we're going to do a make one left which is just a little bit different but similar in that we pick up this strand of yarn between the stitches with our right needle and place it on our left needle but in the opposite direction so coming from back to the front and now we will knit that stitch 
through the back loop. Not this way, but through the back loop. And that is another increase stitch, but it's a make one left. And that just helps uh, the stitches lean in the right direction for our increases. All right, we'll slip that next marker. Now we're going to just continue this pattern um, that we've developed with the stocking net and the ribbing, but this uh, row is going to be all knit stitches. So we'll just knit to the end of this round, which is a total of, let's see, it's a total of 27 stitches, okay? So we'll knit all the way to the end of this round. Okay, so now we are ready for round two of our thumb gusset, but this time we are going to knit it without um, any increases. We are only going to do an increase for the gusset every third round. Okay, so these next two rounds, we're not going to do the increases, just knit um, straight across. But remember that we're still following our uh, pattern of stocking net and ribbing for the remainder. So for some uh, rows, you're going to, you know, not do the increase in here, but you have to pay attention to whether or not you're doing the knit one purl one in the ribbing or just knitting across. So again, if you want those exact stitch by stitch uh, instructions, I would encourage you to follow the link below. So let's continue in this fashion by doing the next two rows with no increases, but following this uh, knit, uh, knit sequence. Um, and then I'll let you go uh, finishing the gusset on your own and then we'll work from there. So let's do our next round with no increases. So we're just gonna knit to our stitch marker, slip our marker and continue to, to knit with no increases this time to our next marker. and continue in our pattern here. So we're gonna knit these first stitches. And then now we're on um, another knit one, purl one section here. So we're going to um, do a knit one, purl one for the next few stitches following our ribbing pattern. and then finish it by uh, knitting 10 stitches. Okay. So now uh, for round three, we are still not gonna do our increases. We're gonna wait to do that on the next round. So now we just have to do another kind of straight knitting. And this time um, we're gonna just knit the stitches in between the markers with no increases, but now our um, repeat for the mock ribbing is just knitting all the way across. So for this round, we are just simply knitting all the stitches. Okay, we're ready for now another increase round for our thumb gusset. So let's just do that uh, increase round here. We're gonna knit to our marker. So knit two, slip the marker, and now let's do that make one right again where we slip, pick up that stitch, place on our needle, give it a little room there for our needle to go through and knit that first stitch. And that is our increase. Now we'll knit to the marker again. And now we'll do a make one left increase. So pick that up, slip it on the needle the opposite direction and knit through the back loop of that one for our make one left increase, slip the marker. And now let's continue in the pattern for the remainder of this round. And this time we're going to knit up to our ribbing section and we're ready to now do another knit one, purl one uh, repeat for this ribbing section. So 
flip it over. Finish up that ribbing for a few stitches. And finish with knit to the end of the round. Okay, so now we're going to continue in that fashion, right? Where we are increasing every third round um, for our thumb gusset, but then yet following the stitch pattern for the rest of the uh, rest of the round for the hand. We're going to do that until we have 11 stitches between the markers. And we're going to make sure that we are ending after um, uh, two more regular rows. So once you do that, once you get to 11 stitches, you're still going to do two more rows of no increases. So again, follow those written instructions if you want specific stitch by stitch uh, instructions on each of these rounds, but that's how you're going to do the right hand mitten th thumb gusset. The left uh, mitten is just a little bit different just because of the placement of the thumb. So this, uh, the stitch sequence is going to be different. So let's finish up this thumb gusset and then I will come back and we'll uh, wrap up the rest of the hand. All right, well, we have finished the thumb gusset here, and I have now 11 stitches between my stitch markers. And when I uh, did that round and increased it to 11 stitches, then I did two more rows or rounds where I did not do the increases, but followed the pattern that we have in place for the rest of the hand. So now I am ready, after this thumb gusset is complete now, to set aside the stitches for the thumb so we can knit them later. We're gonna set them aside, knit the rest of the, the hand here, and then we're gonna come back to knit the thumb. So here's how we're gonna set aside those thumb stitches. This is where you need your scrap yarn and a darning needle. So just thread your scrap yarn onto your darning needle. And get that ready. And now we're going to knit up to our stitch marker, which is just these first two stitches. Remove that stitch marker, and now these 11 stitches we are going to thread onto our darning needle and onto the scrap yarn. So let's move those stitches, just slide them off the needle and onto your darning needle. Remove that needle, remove the stitch marker. Whoops, I had one more. Oh, here we go. I just didn't take it off the needle. Uh, remove the stitch marker. And now these stitches are kind of hanging out there waiting for us to work them after we finished the rest of the hand. So now we can uh, knit the rest of the row or the round here, but you'll notice that I've got now a large gap between the stitches on this side and the stitches on this side of my knitting. So to do that, we are going to cast on some additional stitches to fill in that gap. And we're going to cast on five stitches uh, to do that. So to in order to cast on stitches in the middle of a round like this, we're going to do a very simple cast on where we're just taking our working yarn and wrapping it around our thumb from back to front like this and then just insert your needle through that hole you created there and pull it tight on the needle. So a very, very simple cast on. So that was one, two, wrap it around your thumb, place it on your needle, three, four, and five. Okay, so now that we've completed and kind of filled in that gap there, we can do the rest of the um, round, which is going to be on this round because we already just did the purl one and um, knit one sequence on the last time. This is going to be just an all knit round. So let's knit to the end of this round. Okay, so now we are going to do just a few more rounds um, to fill in this little uh, portion of the hand. So we're just going to now uh, follow our pattern where every other row we do the knit up to this ribbing section, then do a knit one, purl one around, and then um, complete 
with more uh, knit stitches to the end of the round. So let's do that, <clears throat> that next round where we are going to knit for several stitches here. And here when you're knitting those cast on stitches, sometimes the stitches are a little tight, so just make sure you're kind of getting in those stitches and not splitting that yarn. It can be a little tricky. up to that ribbing section. Now we're going to follow the knit one, purl one for six times, knit one, purl one. Again, just following the pattern that we've established previously. Okay, now this next round is going to be an all knit round um, that we're going to complete. So knit all stitches. All right, so we are going to do that two row repeat uh, two, three more times um, for this portion of the hand. And then we are going to switch to all ribbing. So let me just work up ahead a little bit, do that two row sequence three more times, and then we'll do um, a couple more rows of just ribbing. All right, now let's finish up the hand by knitting a few rows of just that mock ribbing. So. The first uh, round of that is going to be knit one purl one all the way across and then followed by an all knit round all the way across. We're going to do that two row sequence ribbing around the entire round a total of three times. So let me do that um, ribbing section here and then I will show you how I do the bind off on the hand. Okay, now we are done with the hand section of the fingerless mittens after we had completed a total of six rounds of this mock rib pattern or three complete rounds of the two row around sequence. Um, so that's the section right here of this mock rib. So now we are ready to bind off. Now you, if you did just a regular bind off for these mittens, um, it won't provide much stretch at the top and um, since this is where your fingers are going to be I like to have a little bit of a more of a stretchier bind off so your fingers can move around a little bit better. So I'm going to use the stretchy bind off that I use um, a lot and that's uh, very simple to do but it, it provides a little bit of a nice stretch. So what we're going to do for to do that is we are going to start by knitting two stitches And then we are going to transfer those two stitches that we just knitted to our left hand needle. But we're going to keep our right needle in place because now we are going to knit these two stitches together through the back loop, just as your needle is positioned right here. So we're going to knit those two together through the back loop and take those two stitches off the needle. So now we have bounded off a stitch. So now we're going to continue by knitting another one. So we again have two stitches on our right needle. We will move those stitches over to our left, keep the right needle where it is, and knit those together through the back loop. All right, so that's this very simple stretchy bind off. We're going to do that around the entire round, knitting one more, moving them to the other needle, and then knitting those two together through the back loop. 
So I will finish that and then we will go on to finish with the thumb. All right, we've got a nice uh, stretchy bind off completed here and now we are ready to complete our mitten by finishing up with a thumb. So we're still gonna be working with the magic loop on this method, but now we have to pick up these stitches on the thumb and knit for just a few rows, just to give it a nice little um, short thumb there. So let's flip our uh, mitten over here and we're going to first pick up these five stitches we casted on here in the middle of that round, remember that? So you can, I see those stitches here with this little loop. There's one, two, three, four, and five. So we're going to just, with our one end of our long circular needle, the same needle we used for the rest of the mitten, we're just going to insert our needle into each of those uh, five stitches. Make sure I'm not splitting there. The yarn is a little finicky, there we go. And there's a third one, so three, four, and five. So we got those five from the cast on edge. Then we're also going to do these three of these stitches from our scrap yarn. So we'll have a total of, and again, we're just gonna pick them up and slide them onto this, our needle. So there's one, two, and three. So now we've got eight stitches on that needle. Let's pull this through a little bit. And then we're going to pick up the last eight stitches on that scrap yarn. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And this last one is kind of tucked in there. So you want to make sure that you're getting the one that's wrapped around that pink yarn. There's that stitch kind of hiding underneath there. So there is the last eight stitches. So you can pull this scrap yarn out. And now we have, if you recognize this, this uh, formation, ready to knit with the magic loop. And now we're just gonna knit a very small circumference for the thumb for just a few rounds. We're gonna do it actually for a total of eight rounds, just stocking that stitch, so no uh, fancy stitching and uh, that will complete our thumb. But to do that, since we've already bound it off and cut off the yarn, we need to start with a new working yarn. So just take your end of your uh, yarn or ball of yarn. I like to, however you like to join, but I like to wrap it around my pinky a couple times to give it a little stability. Then we're going to put it between those two needles, draped across, just like we started with the magic loop when we did the cuff. And we're gonna take this end of the needle and bring it around to start knitting here. Now, before we start knitting these five cast on stitches, I want you to pay attention to how they are orientated on the needle. They're kind of coming from the front and then going to the back. And that may look a little funny to you because it really is. It's actually on the needle backwards just because we have we inserted the yarn on there. But we can fix that as we knit. And by doing uh, to do that, we're going to knit these first five stitches through the back loop, not in this way, but through the back loop, and that will correct the orientation and our stitch will not be twisted. So let's knit those first five stitches through the back loop. Okay, and then the rest of these stitches are correct. So we can just knit those our normal way through the front loop. Okay, now we're gonna switch to do the rest of the stitches. Bring this, bring these stitches onto that and tip of the needle, pull the back one out just like we've always done. And we'll knit these eight stitches. Okay, so that was our very first round of the thumb. We're gonna do seven more of those rounds. But I wanna stop here briefly 
because I want to um, we want to do something with this tail. Um, see the tail that we have here right now? It's sitting on the outside. If we continue to knit, this tail is going to be on the wrong side. It's going to be on the outside of the mitten. The right side, we do not want it there. We're going to want to hide that tail and weave it in on the inside of the mitten. So before you get any further, just take that tail and push it in uh, that hole of the mitten. And you can kind of grab it from the inside, pull it out, and that way your tail is in the right spot, okay? So now let's knit another round. We're gonna do seven more of these rounds of knitting the thumb, and then we're gonna bind that thumb off just like we did uh, with the top of the mitten with a stretchy bind off. So let's do seven more rounds and then we'll bind off. All right, eight rounds of the thumb are completed. So now it's time to bind off these thumb stitches. So we're gonna do that in the same way we bound off the top of the mitten by knitting two, and then moving them to the left needle and knitting those two together through the back loop. So we're gonna do that, bind off all these stitches of the thumb and then all that is left is to do a little weaving in of the ends and kind of patching up a few things on the inside of the mitten. Okay, so now those are bounded off. We can cut our tail and pull that through. And now we're just gonna close this gap a little bit and weave in this end. So when you're trying to want to close that gap for um, a bind off edge like that, just go in through this very first V of this bind off from the front to the back, and that will close that up. And then just go to the other side, the other V over here, to pull that shut. And you can secure it one more time by going back in through that first V. And then you can uh, weave in your, your thumb, your, your tail inside the thumb. I'm not going to do that now just to save on time because I wanted to show you one other thing on the, um, let's move this needle, on the inside of your mitten. We just want to do a little uh, cleanup of it because what will happen when you, when you knit a thumb is that you will always have these little holes at the very base of the thumb. So we want to um, kind of patch those holes up and uh, coincidentally, we've got a tail here that we have to weave in. So I'm going to take advantage of my tail and my needle here and just do a little patch up of this hole. Now I don't really do anything fancy. I just kind of go in one stitch and the other, maybe go down just a few. So it looks like it's a little loose there as well. Give it a little tug and kind of go up the other side. Just to kind of do a simple patchwork of that thumb, okay? And now we can do the same thing on this side, but I gotta travel over there first. So let's just kind of go in and around these stitches so I can get over to this other hole. And let's patch up this hole as well. Okay, and there you've got it. So then just weave in this last end as well and the end of your cuff. But you can do that on your own. And there we have this wonderful fingerless mitten. Let's try it on and see how it fits. Oh, perfect. Yay, that was so fun. So a very easy project to do. Um, to practice using the magic loop method. Um, it's really makes uh, for knitting these small circumference of fabrics uh, really fun and easy to do. You don't have to worry about those double pointed needles. So if you like this video, don't forget to give me a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see other videos all about knitting tips and techniques, don't forget to subscribe. I produce videos all about um, tips and fun knitting patterns and creative stitches. So happy knitting everyone. Thanks for watching.